and welcome to another Mark Bishop show. Well, according to research by the University of Minnesota Extension, the population of residents ages 30 to 49 years old has increased in rural Minnesota counties. Now, you may say, well, okay, why? Well, in order to better understand the phenomena, Ottertail County, Minnesota created a seven-part video series exploring why folks choose to live there. And the co-producer of the series is a fellow by the name of Eric Osberg, Rural Rebound Initiative Coordinator of Otter Tail County. Welcome, Eric. Nice to have you. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Nice shot I've got of you, too, handling that fish. Man, that's a huge fish. (laughs) What is it? What sort? Uh, uh, That's probably a walleye. Um, Walleye is king here in Minnesota and... and, uh, I'm uh, pretty sure that's a nice big walleye I caught it's somewhere in Otter Tail County. I was going to say, I mean, uh, if you can't catch a fish up there, I think I read in your county alone there's something like uh, over a 1,000 lakes. Um, Minnesota itself, uh, 10,000 or something, isn't there in Minnesota? Yep, we're in the land of 10,000 lakes, and you are right. There is over a 1,000 lakes. It, it, 1,048 is the number we use for right. Otter Tail County. Uh, and, and, and real quickly, to put that in perspective, if you visited a new lake once a week in Ottertail County, Minnesota, it would take you 20 years to see them all. Well, so lots of opportunities to catch fish. Yeah, you never get bored, that's for sure. You know, if you're into fishing, I mean, I'm a Pisces, poor thing. What I ever do to get yanked out the water? You know what I mean? Anyway, listen, right, right. Uh, Eric, my guess would be that in general, the newcomers are searching for a simpler pace of life. You know, a safe, supportive place to raise a family, uh, lower living expenses, perhaps, and access to uh, outdoor recreation. What say you? hundred uh, percent. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's that's what uh, the research shows. People are looking for, um, and you know, once you once you reach that thirty years, thirty to fifty years old, right? You've been, you know, whether you grew up in a rural place or not, you're you're now caught up in the hustle and bustle and the rat race and all that stuff that goes along with it, at some point you decide, you know what, there might be a better way. Mm-hmm. Time to dream a different dream and, and um, maybe slow down a little bit. You know, maybe, maybe you want to, you know, maybe you've got a new family or young kids and you're looking for a support of, you know, it, it takes a village to raise a child, right? <laughs> um, right. You know, so if you're looking for those types of things in your life, uh, a rural place, and in this case, Ottertail County, Minnesota, is, is a very viable option. Well, the Rural by Choice docu-series itself, it's it's hosted, written, and co-produced by uh, Perham, I think that's correct, Minnesota uh, native Corey, uh, is it Heppola or Heppola? It, it's Heppola. It, it is Heppola, right. Heppola. Right. Yeah, right. I was, Heppola, yes, okay, I was going to ask him that today, but I guess he chickened out the last minute, but whatever. <laughs> Um, it's yeah, it. co-produced by Eric Osberg, right, which is you, uh, Pelican Rapids, yep. Minnesota natives Mika and Jenna Kaviti directed the film and edited the series. This sounds pretty good series called Rural by Choice. So where am I going to be able to watch it? You can watch it at ruralbychoiceotc.com. Uh, we have all of the, it's a seven-part video series, and so we have all the videos housed there on our website, Rural by Choice otc.com uh if you're on youtube you can just search for otter tail lakes country uh all seven videos are there as well we have the videos on our facebook page we have links on our twitter feed and and some snippets on our instagram as well so if you're on social media all you have to do is enter otter tail lakes country into the search button and uh you should be able to find it and uh yeah it's it's pretty fun series and it's a diverse series uh different episodes and they you know they each all have a beginning a middle and an end and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so so far the feedback has been positive and, and folks are really getting a kick out of it am i going to see a lot of otters yeah well no you're not going to see as many as you might think it is it, it, that's a good that's a good question next time we should we should uh load the show with otters <laughs> i will say this one of our as far as our tourism marketing goes we, we have an otter uh, puppet, and so we, we do use an otter puppet quite a bit in, in a lot of our other marketing <laughs> materials. Okay. Not, in, not in this series, though, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty of fun with otters to be had. 
So, you know, we joke about people just uprooting and leaving and all this jazz, just moving from the cities and all that. I mean, it's, it's not that easy, really. But the big extension today is the fact, yes, there is an internet, and if you can make a living off the thing or you can work remotely and so on, I guess there's no reason for one not to consider going to a place like we're talking about here. Yeah, and, and I think if we learned anything from the pandemic, it's that you can accomplish a, a lot with a with the internet, right? I mean, remote work and telework used to be this, this unicorn, if you will. Did it really exist? Are those people really working? You know, there was all these questions that surrounded telework or remote work. Mm-hmm. But in the last two years, we've all, most of us anyways, have accomplished something via the internet. So, yeah, you're right. As long as there's a decent internet, internet connection, you can live the life you want to live wherever you want to live it. And um, selfishly, we, we want people to consider Otter Tail County, Minnesota as one of those options. Well, uh, speaking of that, Eric, tell us a little bit about Otter Tail County and the quality of life, you know, different from the bigger cities. Well, uh, you know, we touched on a little bit, 1,048 lakes. Um, there's two state parks within the county. There's rolling hills. There's trees, there's rivers, there's streams, um, 22 quaint communities mm. that make up the county, uh, super school system, uh, supportive school system, you know, with the kind of place where you, you know, the teachers and the teachers know you, uh, and there's, and there's a booming economy. I mean, there's a manufacturing economy, there's an agriculture economy, there's a hospitality economy, uh, health education. I mean, you name it, if there's a, a job that you can have in a in an urban place, mm-hmm. I'd be willing to bet that that same job exists in Ottertail County. It's just a little bit different, or maybe on a smaller scale. Yeah, but don't you also have it freezing cold with snow and all that as well? Yeah, we do. It was, <laughs> it was 24 degrees. Yeah, we do. We sure do. It was 24 degrees this morning no. uh, when, when I took the kids to school. Right. Uh, and, you know, there, there, there's always trade-offs, right? Yeah, um, mate. I mean, look, you know. You can't have everything about what about skiing? People love skiing. I bet you got plenty of that there too. We have lots of cross country skiing. We're, we don't have the, you know, we don't have the big, huge hills. We have some rolling hills, but, but nothing big enough to call a mountain. But uh, cross country skiing, snowshoeing, going for a walk in the woods in the winter, mm-hmm. um, ice fishing. If, you, if you've never been ice fishing, that's an experience. You know, the lakes freeze over and you. You go out and you cut a hole through the ice. And yeah. You try to pull a fish through it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, it, it, you do have to have a hearty soul, right? It yeah. is, is going to get really, really cold in January mm-hmm. and February, especially. Well, but uh, the four seasons, you know, four seasons are something special. Well, I've seen I've seen plenty of you know videos in my life with the ice fishing business, and that's quite unique in its own way. You know, as long as you don't fall in, I guess. Rural areas, you know, yeah. they've, they've they've changed a lot in the last decade, haven't they? They have. And, and I think, you know, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit. The Internet has, has, has been a big part of that change. You know, when when I grew up in a rural place, I, we were pretty isolated. There wasn't a lot of connectivity with the rest of the world. And, you know, um, my kids are at the push of a button connected with whatever they want to be connected with, for mm-hmm. good or bad. But, it, it, you know, from a from an economic standpoint, that opens a lot of opportunities up. And, you know, the rural places are getting more diverse. Diverse. One again, one of the episodes of the docu series, episode seven, is all about diversity. And, and um, Pelican Rapids, Minnesota, which is a small town, two three thousand people, is as diverse from as, from a population standpoint as Minneapolis St. Paul, as far as as far as the school district is concerned. Right. So it is. It has changed. You know, in the over the last decade, over the last 10, 20 years. And, um, you know, again, what we're, 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 what we're really trying to do is, is to combat the narrative that rural is dead or rural is dying. We're just, rural is changing, and we think it's changing for the better. That's good. That's good, because it puts a whole different slant on it. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm talking to you from the, the warmth of the desert here in Tucson in Arizona, but uh, the reality is I come from a country where we've got a lot of outback and <laughs> plenty of space to do your fishing yeah. and God knows what else, you know. But I'd love to see your neck of the woods. I really would, but I probably wouldn't go in the winter. I'd like to go in the spring or the summer. I believe you have beautiful summers there. And uh, it would be nice to do it, but, you know, it'd be really great. I'd love to get an RV and go camping. The missus, though, she only wants to camp at the Hilton, you know what I mean? you got that sort of business. I hear you. First, yeah. first class or 
sleep in the street. What well, you know, once you watch the video series, once you even if you just watch episode one, you'll get a pretty good idea of of the beauty that the that the area has. Fabulous. Is, Jenna and Micah Kavit, you 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 mentioned them earlier. Um, they did just a wonderful job with the filming and the editing, and mm-hmm. it, and it really it it reflects the area at a level that that we couldn't have anticipated. It it looks it looks like a million bucks. So. Well, um, I got to tell yeah, you, really I, people- I'm really looking forward to seeing this, folks. Just write it down. Grab a pen quickly, pencil, whatever. We're talking www.ruralbychoice, right? O-T-C. This is all one sentence. Ruralbychoiceotc.com. And that's the best place that to go it. to find you it, right? It. Uh, it's all over the joint. I'm really looking yes, forward sir. to the series. Good luck with it. You never know what may come out of this for you, Eric. Appreciate you taking the time away from your fishing to have a chat with us, mate. I appreciate you, sir. Bye now. Catch you later. Bye-bye.